Oi, oi, we're back for another All My Bets video. Was missing in action last Saturday, purely for the fact that I was hosting the GG Weekend Watch. I didn't need to tip within there. And it's nice to take a little bit of a break, isn't it? So, um, yeah, didn't actually have any bets last week. So it's not a case of I was doing bits and I'm going to have time now. I try not to be that type of person. But we've got a lot of action going on this weekend. You've probably seen from the thumbnail that I've got Grand going out. That's not by design. I didn't just say to myself, oh, I fancy having a chunk on. But the action is pretty good, right? There's 11 races on ITV. We covered them on GG Weekend Watch. So you can go watch that video if you want some in-depth detail in there. See what Matt has picked as well. He's been in flying form at the minute. But um, the purpose of this one, I'll try and keep it a bit shorter. I'm going to just share my bet slips of everything that I've done. You'll see the stakes that I've put on there as well. There'll be high and low ones in there, which I know can frustrate people out there. But at the top and the bottom of it is, if I'm going to look at a race with a level of detail where I might suggest to someone, this is what I fancy within the race, I feel like I want to bet it personally. But there will also be my level of snobbiness that comes in where... I've got a ceiling of how much I actually really want to risk on certain types of races. And it tends to be class of races, class of horses, uh, those types of things. So there's a few more like punty type bets. I'm doing that. It's not because I've been on the gears because I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> there's a few more like, I guess, like punty type bets. But when they are more risky than other ones, I guess, is the best way of saying it, then I would probably have lower stakes on it. So, yeah, you'll see some bits in it. I've got like 10 of each way on a, on a horse, and I've also got 150 each way on a horse. So I want to share this and be transparent with you guys because I could sit here and reel off all the 11 horses that I fancy or however many I've done, and you might just think, all right, well, how much am I staking on that? Or you might just decide to do the same stake on everything. I want to reiterate that when I'm putting some of these bets on that are smaller stakes, go, go with what you want. You might want to have the same stake on everything you might not want to go to a heavy bet you might want to only bet the ones that i bet a certain amount on you could do what you want with it but obviously you can only do that if you're armed with everything that i've done and the reason why i share those little ones i could say to myself do you know what i'll just keep the big ones in but then what's the point of doing that um i'm happy to be transparent because at the end of the day if i share with you a limited information you would potentially look at me and view me as the person that does it like that then when it comes out in the washing and all like that, A, the trust goes out the window, and B, you're not necessarily learning as punt as yourself out there. Not that this is always an educational thing, but obviously giving my thoughts and sharing my opinion on it is going to help you build and decide what you're going to do with yourself. So, yes, I like to be like that. Um, the SBC Awards came out. I was in three categories this year, but the one I was in last year, which was the best um, betting video producer, we've gone up from fifth, no, from seventh to fifth in the rankings there. We've gone from like five and a half percent to eight percent of you so um that's quite mad ran in a race and did all right to be fair considering all the other channels were in there as like a, a whole channel rather than just one podcast so big up jamie for that and then i got in the free tips to uh, category as well which considering i don't have like a column or an outlet for doing daily tips i was um not, I was, like shocked is one way of putting it but not in a bad way like i was quite pleased to be shoved in there but we've got like the baseline now of where we can step up from i'm going to try and push out see if i can get a daily column especially for the jump season because i'll be Smash them left, right, and center. And these all my bets videos will probably continue regardless. But obviously, I do show a video now for Saturday's racing. Um, I, I have bet everything that I'm going to bet this weekend. I'll be just enjoying the time with the boy, probably sticking my phone and do not disturb so I can't see the results. Won't be doing any trading this weekend. But there obviously will be times through the season where I might have bets a little bit more last minute. And um, I don't know, some of you find it easier to quickly read a column than you do to watch a video. So I'm going to see if I can get myself something out there. So any sponsors or bookies that are watching this, <laughs> give me give me the ability to do it because I, I know it's worth it, right? Anywho, so yeah, thanks for your support. We'll see how much we can push that next year, but that's not what the video is about. We, it's about Saturday and the bets, right? So I'll start putting them up. We're not. I'm not going to waffle too much within it. As always, though, like, I, you, like... I know everyone will say it, but you don't, you guys, I don't think you guys really do understand the, like how much I appreciate your support. Um, there's obviously varying people that might watch videos. There are people that are there hoping that some of the bets get beat. I know the vast, vast, vast majority of you out there are sort of on my side. But that doesn't mean that just because I fancy something, if you've got a different opinion, you're going to sway and just go of mine, right? We all know the rules of the game. It's what we fancy. We're sharing our opinions. I just like to talk horses, and I appreciate every single one of you for giving me the outlet to do it so um if you haven't already make sure you subscribe that's always nice in it drop a like to the video because it's free and it's nice and I, I do read all the comments so again 
I might get like semi annoyed with some of the what I'd class as like negative comments, but like they're all valid for, to be said, aren't they? And if they're not, then I'll potentially challenge them. But drop in what your best bets are. Look, there's 11 of them out there. Come on, I'm going to have a few bets in here that you guys are going to think are mad. I'm happy to take it. I'm really comfortable wherever I'm sat with all of these, which is another thing that's good with me, even personally, just doing these sort of timelines of stuff, even recording things on my profit and loss. I'm feeling more comfortable with where I am staking. And this is a big, big move considering it's the flat. Um, going into the jump season, I'm so full of confidence it's mad but we're not on the jump season just yet we've got some fantastic flat racing this saturday 11 races itv six are handicaps five are pattern races which are my cup of tea really goodwood only a couple of weeks away we've got some good racing basically coming up and then it will be jumpy time but anywho let's crack on if you want full detailed in-depth reasoning behind why i bet stuff then go watch the gg weekend watch I'm not going to share everything in here because I'd be on here for hours. Of course, if people have got any questions, they don't want to go watch the video or anything like that, then drop it in the comments and I'll try and I will reply as long as it's before Saturday. Saturday with the boy when I so screw you. Don't know what order these are going to pop up either. I do this on StreamYard, right? And on the side, they're really small. I can kind of half work them out, but then we've got so many races. Does it really matter? I could probably do it in stakey order to some degree. So let's um yeah, let's try do that. Let's go. Let's pull this one up first, right? So you can see there's a couple of bets in there. There's a there's a the top and the bottom, right? So there's a star last bet in there, hundred pounds each way I've had on that at four to one, significantly shorter now. Um, again, go look at weekend watch for the reason. I think there's I think there's also got a proper proper chance. It is like I don't want to not say anything on any of the horses in there because I think it's a bit harsh to say. Listen to what I bet, but I'm not going to tell you why. Right? It's only, only run a couple of times over five furlongs, and it, it won the handicap. The runs it's run over side was behind Inner Sharon and just saw at the start of the season. They're both running in the July Cup, which is a, a Group One. This is a listed race. Ran behind Big Evs in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, didn't he? Last year, I just, it, is a, it is a group horse that's running a listed race and still relatively unexposed at five furlongs. Put blinkers on last time, it's just a tiny bit of a worry. But, you know, look, we've got nine runners in here. Of course, that could drop down. Clarendon House, I think, is a bad favourite. The listed race he won over in the, uh, I think it was Cork he went over to. I don't think it's very good. I do think with the, the flat, we have got the luxury that there's no big gulf between Irish and British runners. But 104 horse. Clarendon House beat. Look, I know he's in the form of his life, but Starlust just looked a bit of a rick at the price. Um, the blinker bit's a bit of an annoyance because who knows what's going to happen with any of it, but I felt it was relatively safe. This would be the type of bet, again, where I'd say to myself, look, I, I could make this Starlust a 5-2 to two poke. So the reason why I've bet him each way is, look, I've got the almost the 700 quid bet you get from 5-2, to two, but I have got the concession that if he comes second or third, I've got most of my money back so i kind of i kind of wanted to play it that way around a lot of you again from the og days will remember i'm not really massively in each way better but when it comes to the flat i would rather i've decided now especially look at the profit loss i'd rather bet some of these each way than what i do on the jumps which would be bet this and then bet the dangers because it's flat race isn't it you'll see van deeks there as well five to one now it, it, i don't know what price he is at the time of recording he is he isn't five to one at the moment he's probably nine to two top price but there are four places up for grabs i put this on in the week there's only three places up for grabs for him which yeah, i'm toying with right so just a quick one right a third like a fifth of the odds for three places at five to one and a fifth of the odds for four places at four to one obviously the returns will be lower but they're much in a muchness right it, it doesn't always work exactly that we're lucky because we've got the four and five numbers in there but if the cash out was available, I would have toyed with cashing this out, seeing if I can play him four places at say nine to two because safer, right? But I don't, I don't know if he's going to bomb like that. I think Van Diet's going to win. Like, I, I think he he had he had his run at ADOT where he was given a few pounds away, wasn't he? He's had bloods come out recently before the Ascot race where he wasn't okay. I'm not saying he was. They haven't said this either, but he might not have been alright at ADOT. To be fair, is two year old form batters the rest of this field? I mean, you've got a horse like Jasur that's sort of in the lines of um like running a few lengths behind Inner Sharon. Inner Sharon, I was impressed with at first glance at Ascot, but after I've watched it back, I just think if Van Diet was in there, he'd done him. And this is going to be a real quick group one six furlong pace, um, which I don't feel like Inner Sharon has done yet. Look, he, he deserves to be favourite. Van Diet was too big a price. So <clears throat> it's a pretty sizable bet to be fair, isn't it? I would have bet Van Diet to beat Inner Sharon at Ascot. We never got to find out in the Commonwealth Cup what happened, but I'm I'm glad that obviously he didn't run and the connections did spot the issue because he would have got beaten. It would have come out after and then we would have had the question mark and I may have been throwing some more cash in now. But look, that, that, that is three places to place. Three-year-olds have got a fantastic record in this race. There's been one six-year-old that's won this since like 1945. 
the last seven year old was like 1938 there's been 50 percent have been three-year-olds like 35 percent have been four-year-olds like it is the younger horses that tend to do well so market is where it is and then just watch him in the was it the middle park stakes where he just walked past river tiber like he wasn't doing anything i don't know how that horse is as close to him in the market as he is i, I, I think that van Dijk, we don't definitely know that he's trained on but i'm taking a chance that he has and i'm talking about these ones in a bit more length i guess because they are more sizable stakes right i am very comfortable with where i'm sat with the van Dijk bet like i'm happy to have that much on a bit like when we about big evs at ascot like it was an each way bet sort of to again i felt like to nothing this might not happen right they van Dijk may just would not be the same horse anymore because he, he did finish quite tamely at, at Haydock, which is, but uh, not, it's not a worry, but it's a potential thought in my head. I'm going into this basically eyes wide open that I'm not doing this as a scummy each way bet because I'm 100% sure he's going to place. This is more of a case where I think if he runs to his best, then he's definitely in the frame. He's got to get past in a show and he'll be coming for Bayern, which Daryl's talked about quite a bit in his column as well, which is very true. Um, so like he could run really well and he could get beat. He also could bomb, couldn't he? So it's not one of these where I want to play a wind dart. I've, again, from the amount that I want, I've wanted to have on, um, I, I feel comfortable in what I've done. This doesn't mean, again, guys, when you're watching this out there, because you know how much I typically might stay, like 25s or 50s or something. This doesn't mean I want you all to go and steam into something, but I do really fancy Van Dijk. I'm happy to back my opinion. I do understand there's risks attached. So this wouldn't be something for someone that doesn't know anything about horse racing to look at that and say, geez, that's a massive bet. I have to lump on that. I'm sort of half explaining this now and pitching it and the fact that you guys have got your own opinions and you guys know the horses as well, if not um, close to as well as I do. So that, that's where we are with the sort of the biggie ones. I'm going to go in a weird order. Let's do the um, exchange ones as well. So these don't show the commission that's come off, which is 2%, but I've got a rough idea of what they are. Um, so carry the one. You're going to see there's another horse I bet later on. Carry the one I've bet, not just off the back of it, but I've, I've, I've watched Daryl's um, Betfair podcast and i've watched the races back as well and carry the one was so so eye-catching at ascot ryan moore's booked up now i don't know where his price is going to go he's going to go i think you can get five to one lab books or corals but I, I can't get on online on the shop with them um he, he might go off bigger daryl's advised him as bet fair sp in his column isn't he go and read that but um I, I was happy with, with the in on that so that one will pay about um 415 pounds to come back if that comes in about ancient truth as well in the superlative um it's again it's, like, it's more of a visual there's only a couple of runs and you don't really know what's going to happen in these races but I, I don't think it looks a vintage renewal there's no way that um the one that uh, got Aidan O'Brien sent over this year is anywhere near the level of the city of Troy he's thrown so many duds over in the past so I, I don't think it's that great a race I think ancient truth actually genuinely could be a 2000 guineas horse next year I don't mind the seven to four I, I'd imagine there'll be Probably people trying to get him tomorrow. But yeah, pays about um, 270 back for that after the commission comes off. And then Kudwa, um, it's only had a few runs. I mean, this horse looks like an absolute aeroplane. I don't think Sonny Liston is as good as his rating suggests. That's been sort of come from handicapping. So he's got five pounds to find. But even if he did have that, he looks progressive enough that he's going to go and um, go and do good things, I think. I think this, I think this Kudwa's obviously there. You can see I've, I've had 150 on it. I think that's a reasonable bet. That one pays 317 or something like that, whatever it is. So about 460, something about, say 465 for the purpose of doing this. So again, they're reasonable size stakes, aren't they, considering what I might normally throw up. But they are what they are. I'm not doing this on purpose because I want, like I said, I fancied a few bets this week and I've done it because, you know, relative to the, the horse that's in the race, I'm treating them all as individuals and what would I stake if they were just running on their own on a weekend? So... We are, we are with them. Um, stakes are going in, aren't they? Um, this one, possibly quite topical as well. I want to include this one because I have bet it. So George, he's been on the channel once or cut twice, I think, before. But George, I speak to him quite a lot about horses. We would just talk about this. And he was, he basically was making the case for the fact that this is first reserve, right? But he's getting in with scabbies and non-runner. But this horse was sort of 11 to 2 for the Royal Hunt Cup, I think it was. And it's 25s in here. It was 33s with um, Skybet and... Uh, Paddy Power, Skybet was seven places as well. I think I've got six places here, although Betfair were five places at 33. So look, I've got it in there. Um, it's a bet each way. So it's a 25 each way on there. It's a bit of a pricey type one, like you almost bet off the back of it. So again, I want to include it because I have bet it. This isn't my unearthing in there, but obviously I've had a conversation with someone. They put me on a line or something and I've sort of agreed with it. 
I've agreed with it in terms of the price. This might have been one that I might have looked to trade if I wasn't otherwise occupied on the weekend. And again, in terms of the staking, a lot of you might look at this and say, why is this any different to ones you've had £12.50 each one or even £6.25 each one? Is what it is. I bet that one and I'm, I'm happy to sort of share that one in there. Then we've got, uh, I feel like I've got five more to come in. This might be one that works. So Tashkan in the Silver Cup stakes was three quarters of an length behind Hamish at it last year. Hamish obviously bombed yesterday, but I don't think that was his fault. Everything was coming off the front end, wasn't it? Um, this was run a few times at York over this distance. Um, sort of placed every single time. Three quarters of a length, three quarters of a length, and then behind Stradivarius. It was, well, I say place. It's finished third on each of those occasions, right? There's only been five runners. So there's a bit about it that's maybe not good enough, but like this doesn't look as good as some of the races he's run in the past. I think he's obviously had that prep run. They were desperate to get that prep run into him last time. He was entered in so many things that didn't run because of the ground. I think, I think he's got a chance. 10 to 1 just seemed too big a price for me. So the 25 each way with three places up for grabs felt like a fairly safe-ish one. Like I'd, I'd, I'd hope that the horse would almost definitely place. But again, you don't know, do you? But then it does have the winning chance as well. Otherwise, I'd be looking at those ones. If I don't think they could win, I'd probably just play in the place market. We move on. In the 1.5 the first race on the TV, you're all going to scream at me for this one. But Kings Lynn, right? I put it up last time, just bumped into one. It's relatively short enough price. I think there's five or six places up for grabs on this one. Um, it's been tipped up on the GG thing. I'm happy to throw a tenner each way at that. And again, I know you were saying the grand scheme of stuff. You've got a grand going out there. What's the point of getting 100 quid back? Well, you have to treat them all as individuals, don't you? But yeah, Kings Lynn, glutton for punishment. Don't trust me. Speaking of being a glutton for punishment, you're going to hate this one as well because, oh my God, I bet this horse. Now, this is in the same race as Carry the One, of course. Now, Carry the One... It's got a weight swing with Summergan. Summergan is actually two pound ish wrong because he's gone down in the weights, but the weights were confirmed with this beforehand. But by the by, Summergan was eye catching at the start of the season. Summergan has got a win in him somewhere. He's obviously a 10 year old now. I do prefer him at seven furlongs. Needs some luck in running. They all do, don't they? But I think he's worth a bet. And th thankfully, he's a price that I think is like there. I'm, I'm happy enough. I got 300 quid back for it, some again going, and I wouldn't feel like I've missed out on anything. Uh, the place part of it, I'm happy with as well. So I, I feel fine with that one. That's again, it's a, almost a bet for the sake of betting, but like, it's not, if you know what I mean. I'd I've, I've, I've throw, I've throw 20 quid away on like a McDonald's or something. So I'll have a go on him. Dual identity, I can make a case for, but wouldn't be a race I'd normally delve into. Very much a sand down specialist, but only runner for bad i can't remember the trainer but only running for the trainer at york over the two days um it's got the five pound claim on him as well i, I think this dual identity has got a, a, like enough form in the book i know it's all at sand down to suggest he can go quite well but i don't think he's going up here just for the day out but who knows who knows but that was again another one i was happy to throw the um couple of quid at and then kira 20 pound wind dart on this one now i like this horse he didn't show his best to ascot i do think he's a well handicapped horse but you could bet him each way, but obviously, if I was looking to bet him each way with the five or six places up for grabs, then I'd be tempted to use that concession if I was having a lot more on, if you know what I mean. And I'm not prepared to have a lot more on this horse. So I'd rather, like I say, just a couple of McDonald's or something, I'd rather lose that on Kira. But I think he's got a chance, so I've slapped him in there. So there, we're done. I said I was going to be quick. I probably wasn't, but you've got them all in there. So do go check out the GG Week and Watch if you want a bit more depth and substance to behind what I've said in there. Drop comments below if you want to ask me anything. I'll get through all of them before the end of Friday. If you do it after Friday, then meh, I might get a chance. And of course, make sure you've liked the video. Make sure you are subscribed. I'll be back again with more bets. Like I say, it starts to ramp up a little bit more on the um, flat side of things, but be lucky with whatever you're doing. Be lucky if you do follow me in. I'm trusting that you potentially might not follow me in blind, but I know some of you also may possibly do that. So just massively, just gamble responsibly, right? I, I bet within these stakes and they do make me feel comfortable. If you ever put a bet on and you just get a gut feel of, oh man, this feels doesn't feel right, just lower the stakes. And if you lower the stakes and actually feel like it doesn't work out, then you probably not shouldn't be betting on it. And just find out what happens in the result after, right? You can't go rich on one bet. But you can definitely go poor quite quickly. Um, and then just as a, another thing I'll just chuck in there is there's a few shorteners. The exchange bets I can't do, I can't do much with. I could put low running in lays on there, but with the sports book bets, because obviously best odds guarantee comes at eight o'clock on the day of the races, if I can cash out those bet three six five ones and then restake them at best odds guaranteed, I would always do that. If they've shortened, I'd just leave them. Um, and obviously, if they've drifted and the cash out's lower, then I'd, I'd just sort of take my medicine. Um, but if I can, I'll replace those ones. 
I mean, for the purpose of this, if we top up the profit and loss stuff, I'll just leave them as what you can see on the screen and then apply any rule falls that may come in there. But I, I would suggest you guys do that as well. Don't be afraid of betting into overnight markets just because you don't get the bog because you can switch them. And if you're right and the price shortens and you didn't need the bogs anyway. Right, let's crack on with the weekend. Be lucky. Catch you guys soon. And thank you, as always, for the support. <laughs>